Hi, my name is Julia Bryden, and today I'll be presenting a brief history of particle Markov chain Monte Carlo methods. Here's an overview of what I'll be talking about. PMCMC methods come out of objective Bayes, or MCMC, and as you can see in this diagram, it has a crucial importance of electronic computation, and for that reason, it didn't grow to be as popular as it is today until about the 90s. The bootstrap and empirical bays are also very similar and kind of influence the evolution of these MCMC methods. And then on the left, you can see the timeline that led to the invention of PMCMC. So starting back in 1763, uh, the Bayes theorem was published by Richard Price two years after Bayes' death. Um, and it was published in the Royal Society. Um, and what's interesting about this is since religion and research was kind of intertwined at the time, um, Price actually claimed that Bayes' theorem proves that God exists. And this Bayes' theorem that is written in an essay towards solving a problem in the doctrine of chances uh, is not the one we know today. It instead uh, is a specific example where a uniform prior is used for a binomial parameter. Today, Bayes' rule looks a little more like this, where you have the posterior, which is equal to the prior times the likelihood, all divided by the marginal density of x. And this would be for a probability density um, that is determined by a family of probability densities. And when this uh, method was starting to be more widely used, a lot of people ask, well, what prior should you use? These priors uh, influence what posterior result you get. And so uh, ongoing research was um, happening on determining, well, what priors are the best for scientific applications where we want to be unbiased? In 1946, Sir Harold Jeffries believed that he had the answer. A geophysicist and statistician himself, he believed that priors should be objective. And his method of making an objective prior was to use the Fisher information, shown in equation 3.16. Taking the square root of the Fisher information, or also equivalent to 1 over the variance of the maximum likelihood estimator, the Jeffries prior is able to remain invariant under a change in coordinates for mu. And this is shown by the image on the right where there is more mass for Jeffrey's prior, um, where data has the strongest effect. Um, and so this could be considered more unbiased when compared to um, just using a uniform prior. Unfortunately, these objective or uninformative priors were rejected by most Bayesianists until the 1990s, when they realized that these priors actually might be advantageous computationally, um, because they can be used in um, MCMC or other uh, computational methods where uh, priors need to be easy to compute. Starting in the 1950s, uh, when applying Bayes' rule, a lot of statisticians started to realize when they're calculating the posterior probability of, for example, a set A, they were not able to compute the integrals in closed form. For example, when theta is multidimensional, it is um, difficult or potentially intractable to evaluate uh, this conditional probability. So instead, their solution was to sample from the distribution of uh, g of theta given x. And so by continuously sampling, you're able to approximate the distribution and using that approximation you can estimate what that posterior would be without having to compute those closed form integrals and on the right hand side you can see um, the output of gibbs and bootstrap samples um, which would be an example of these methods and then overall uh, the methods would be called monte carlo methods because they rely on repeated random sampling to obtain numerical results, and that kind of stems from uh, the gambling culture um, that gave birth to these methods. 
The beginnings of MCMC started in 1953 at Los Alamos National Laboratory on the Maniac One computer. And the goal at the time was to approximate J in this form, which is integrals that describe the equilibrium between the liquid and gas phase of substances. And as you can see, the energy can be defined as well as the normalizing factor. Um, and the issue for this computation was that the normalizing factor is not available in closed form. And so we can't compute or approximate um, this value of J directly. So the solution that Metropolis et al. came up with was to um, introduce a random walk into the Monte Carlo sampling method. And so on the bottom, you can see an example of the algorithm that Metropolis created, where for each particle, there's a random walk for X and Y, and um, these particles will be accepted um, if it's within this probability, otherwise they'll be rejected. And it's also interesting to note that the acceptance probability looks very similar to uh, the one in simulated annealing. And that's not a coincidence, it actually is very closely related. And in terms of proof um, for ergodicity uh, or convergence to the stationary distribution, it was proven in the paper um, since the proposal is both reversible and the acceptance probability is invariant. Monte Carlo methods were generalized with Hastings in 1970. MCMC was determined to be a statistical simulation tool instead of something to apply to only specific problems. The acceptance probability was changed to uh, this value of alpha ij, and the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm was born. The way this algorithm works generally is there is a proposed kernel um, which determines uh, how one state transitions to the next, and it can also be called a transition kernel. And for a probability r of x1, x2, the function will transition to the next state. And this is repeated um, to create new kernels um, for each iteration. And to prove that these subsequent kernels will also be a Markov kernel, um, it has been determined in the paper that um, if your initial kernel is a Markov kernel, then subsequent kernels will be Markov kernels. If your probability R of x1, x2 can be written as shown below. And these methods proved um, pretty useful for um, producing samples for hierarchical Bayesian models, as well as um, specific examples such as Gibbs sampling, um, where it has been useful for uh, those problem types as well. Sequential Monte Carlo or particle filtering was introduced uh, rigorously around 1996, and it occurs in two steps. In the first step, the probability of x1 given y1 is approximated using importance sampling, and then in the next step, an approximate joint posterior is constructed using the normalized weights. And as you can see on the right hand side, there is a video of this uh, particular filtering algorithm uh, used for robotic navigation. And for the proof, Pierre de Morel in 1996 proved that the particle filter or SMC methods are unbiased um, for particle approximation and this unbiased particle estimator is reflective of a lot of today's Bayesian statistical inference literature. And as you can see below is part of that proof. Putting everything we learned together around 2010 um, MCMC or SMC slash particle filter uh, can be combined to create PMCMC, where the particle filter 
estimates the likelihood L of X given theta, where theta is the parameter list, um, and X are the observations. And then the metropolis acceptance probability is determined. And these new estimates for the parameters are either accepted or rejected. And then this MCMC loop uh, continues until convergence. Thank you for listening to my presentation and here are my references.